Well, let's shift into our third and final topic for this week's Catechist Stream. What do you say, Deacon Matt? I think it sounds great. We're going to talk in this last topic or block about accompaniment. And we do have previous episodes, too, that address accompaniment. I have a couple of books on accompaniment. Go check them out on Amazon. But accompaniment is something that is kind of this mysterious, amorphous title. that, And sometimes it's a catch-all for everything. And sometimes people reduce it unnecessarily to this idea of we're just kind of uh, accepting everybody as they are and that's all there is to accompaniment like there's no challenge to growth there's no journey to be had which is absolutely erroneous and and has nothing to do with what accompaniment means as insofar as francis has talked about it uh and insofar as for example you know the the, the usccb has talked about it so accompaniment in, in in the church's eyes has to do with how do we build relationships based on respect trust and love it's all about inter it's all about interrelational dynamics which is a lot about you know how we it's human development as much as it is our, our faith development and it kind of goes back to the thing about you know if you're really introverted it, it can be hard to be in a community of faith but the community of faith is so vital for you to continue to grow your faith you know i i even get sometimes a, a challenge of of to that idea of well, what about people who are hermits that live all by themselves you know they don't have communities they're very introverted i would say aha but every hermit knows there are other hermits out there living this life of solitude and there is solidarity in that reality and even though they're not talking with their brother hermits and they're not praying or worshiping together, there is this spiritual connection that they all have by the fact that they are out there doing what they do as these isolated individuals, physically isolated, spiritually connected, just as we all are with the saints in heaven and with one another through faith. But accompaniment breaks down into a lot of different actions and attitudes. And Francis kind of doesn't have one document that sort of spells this all out. You have to really pay attention to his homilies and audiences. And you certainly need to look at Evangelii Gaud, The Joy of the Gospel, which is kind of the, the launch of you know what accompaniment is and what we're going to do about it. But I would ask you to consider a few things, very practical things. In your catechesis, in your in your in your leadership, and in your time at home, think about that action word I used earlier about going out, going out of your comfort zone in order to testify to believe your belief in Jesus Christ. How does that look? Like, what does that even mean? Well, maybe it means in a very simple way. I'm doing a chore that I never want to do because I know that it helps my my spouse out, or I know that it helps the kids out when I do it. All right. It's that little sacrifice. It seems to have no spiritual significance whatsoever. How could we ever find any glory in doing dishes? That's a great question. But how can we find any glory in a crucifixion? Well, the gloriousness is there in the sacrifice and in the love that's behind it. Right. So we do these small things with great love. So going out of your comfort zone is put in these terms, whatever challenges you to test your limits. So maybe it's like your patience. <laughs> Then there are also accompanying attitudes. So how I pray for the attitude of being more patient or the virtue of being more patient. And we know when we pray for these things that God doesn't just snap his fingers and we're made super patient people. We get put into these situations like today with an incredibly stressful technological glitches and you just have to roll with it, right? So I always like to say, if you don't desire to be patient, and that's one of the biggest spiritual blocks to growth in any attitude or any action is we don't really wanna do it, right? So if you don't really wanna do it, do you think you're gonna have a good chance of growing in that virtue? Probably not. So what I recommend is praying for the desire to desire, pray for the desire to desire that new action or attitude because accompanying others, that's what it's all about, how we treat them, how we handle ourselves, conduct ourselves, what we say to people, how we serve them. And that involves actions, attitudes, it involves behaviors. So thinking about going out, that's a fundamental behavior. It gets you out of yourself, it gets you oriented towards other people and how to serve them. It also helps you meet, identify what those challenges are when you relate to other people. Another big one I wanna leave with you is empathy. And this is the last one I'll mention. Francis talks about the importance of empathy. Christ, I always like to say, is the incarnation of empathy. Why? Because we learn in Philippians that he came in the form of a servant. Uh, he did not uh, come to, to uh, be praised as God. He came to serve us and he came to walk in our shoes to experience what humanity is all about and he was like us in all things 
accept sin. That is empathy. It's the, it's the desire to want to walk in someone else's shoes, see the world they see it, engage with life the way they engage. Why? Because you want to step into that experience and then you want to call them forward to a deeper life of Christ, which is ultimately a call for yourself to go deeper. Because empathy, I think, is a huge challenge for any human being. I don't think it's a natural attitude or tendency. I think it's something, if we look at like Darwin and so, or social Darwinism, I doubt empathy would be very favored in natural selection. But it is a wonderful virtue and a gift and a supernatural one that we have to pray for. And it's the empathy and going out. That attitude and that action are the building blocks of accompaniment. So really focus on those two principles, virtues. As you think about making your little offerings, your little ways of treating people uh, a way to glorify God.